today. Come on, just honor this man of God. We thank you so much for all you've done. We love you. Amen. Wow. Praise God. God bless you. Thank you for that warm welcome. And it's so good to be home, too, from, uh, from our travels. We love coming home. We really enjoy being home. Uh, we won't be able to be here another Sunday the rest of uh, this month, and I think uh, uh, maybe half of November. But we get to be here today, and, and uh, I'm so thankful for Pastor Rob for inviting me to speak, especially since he was home and uh, putting me on the schedule. <clears throat> it's just such a, an honor, Pastor Robbie, to, to come and to share. I want to say two things before we jump into the message. One is, Pastor Rob and Monica have done an incredible and amazing job. Uh, I guess 1985, the church, we planted it, started in a home meeting. And um, 2018, so I suppose that would be 33 years. The last, uh, this month, on, on the 18th, will be the fifth anniversary of Pastor Robbie's pastorate. And um, amen. And in just uh, just five, just this first five years, not even five years yet, uh, the church has doubled in attendance. Uh, giving is is incredibly increased, and and uh, the church is continuing to do what God has has called it to do. And uh, I thank you for your leadership, Pastor Robbie, and for your marriage and family and what it means to this community. So I wonder, is it too much just to put our hands together and say, thank you, Pastor Robbie. What a tremendous job. Amen. Amen. Yesterday, my friend Sam Chand was in town and we had breakfast and, and uh, I had a bragathon on Pastor Rob and I think I might have embarrassed him a little bit just bragging on him to Sam and Sam was talking about how unusual this was for uh, with all the churches and ministries that he's dealt with, some of the largest ministries in the country when transitions take place of the pastorate. And he said that we are uh, in rare air by ourselves with what God has done in this transition. And can we thank God for that, for the unity that has been, is here and growth that took place? It usually doesn't happen, but... I think it's a credit to your leadership, uh, son, and I'm so proud of you. <laughs> that might be obvious the way I'm carrying on. The other thing is uh, we just got back from Romania, and Pastor Rob referenced your giving. And uh, can I say to you, um, we got back past midnight Wednesday, and two weeks there we, we witnessed uh, why we're in Romania and why Calvary is reaching out. The Roma and Gypsy communities are the highest number of sex trafficking of uh, young girls and boys come from that nation. In Brasov, we have a church there and also a safe house. You gave into that safe house, you personally, financially. We knew that we couldn't completely stop it. We realized it was a drop in the bucket, working through just the local church in that community to establish this safe house. But there are five children that there now. Two are uh, grown adult young women who are being housed there. They have taken three children in from the orphanage into that, uh, into that home, Tru truly beautiful children, a boy and two girls. And uh, uh, while we were there, the this uh, amazing couple that came out of our church that are pastoring that work there adopted the two girls, the three youngest. Isn't it amazing? They're there. They're trying to save kids, but when they bring them in from the orphanage, they love them so much, and the adult girl, they end up adopting the children, taking on that responsibility themselves and continuing to reach out. So in that, in that home already, there are five children and the two of them young adults, and uh, they're getting, the two adults are working. They're being fed and housed there and uh, working to get their high school uh, diplomas. 
and uh, God's just blessing those two girls, and, and then these three children now have a permanent home <laughs> and have been saved from the streets and out of the orphanage. I wonder if we could just put our hands together and thank God. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor Robbie, for all you're doing there in, in that local church. They're part of us. They're Calvary in Romania. Came out from here. Isn't that exciting? And so one child at a time, we're going to make a difference. If you have your Bibles, go with us to 2 Samuel chapter 23. 2 Samuel chapter 23. I want to share with you just a quick message thought. I'll do it as quickly as I can. 2 Samuel 23, verses 13 through 17. I've never ministered this before. God put this in my heart uh, since I've uh, been home from Romania this week. And... um, sleep deprived and jet lagged and I hope it makes sense. <laughs> 2 Samuel 23 verse 13. And the th- and 3 of the 30 chief went down and came to David in the harvest time unto the cave of Adullam. And the troop of the Philistines pitched in the valley of Rephaim, and David was then in a stronghold, and the garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. And David longed and said, Oh, that one would give me drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. And the three mighty men break through the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, he would not drink thereof, but poured it out unto the Lord. And he said, Be it far from me, O Lord, that I should do this. Is not this the blood of men? that went in jeopardy of their lives. Therefore, he would not drink it. These things did these three mighty men. Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you. Help us to be willing to make the sacrifice, to do whatever is necessary to please our King, the King of Kings. Stir our heart and challenge us to be willing to give our lives, even as a drink offering poured out before you. We pray in Jesus' name. And everyone say amen. Amen. And today, I want you to look back with me at verse 16 and notice these words. We won't read the entire verse, but notice that it says, Nevertheless, he would not drink thereof, but poured it out unto the Lord. At first glance, it appears like David's being ungrateful for the heroic risk taken by these three brave men. You see, they overheard him voice his desire for a drink of water from his childhood hometown, from the well there at the gate in his hometown. I can only imagine the battle that took place as these three mighty men fought their way through a garrison of Philistines to get to that well at the gate. Maybe two of them stood back to back with him behind them while the third man drew water out of the well And then they, with a bucket of water in one hand and sword in the other, fought their way back out of that garrison of Philistines and escaped and brought this this water, this drink, back to David. They loved him so much. They heard his cry, and they risked their lives to bring him a drink of water from that well. They knew that this well meant more to David than any other well. They knew that for David it was water unlike any other water. It was the water that he drank from when he was just a little boy. The feelings of quenching his thirst with the cool, clear well water brought back memories to him. Memories of drawing water from the well when he played as a child at the end of long summer days. Maybe memories from returning from the fields as a shepherd boy, hot and dusty and tired. Maybe the memory and the water tasted so good to him because he used it to wash away the blood and the dust from killing the lion and the bear that had attacked his flock of sheep. And so love and loyalty for David compelled these three brave men to fight their way through an entire troop of enemy soldiers that had occupied Bethlehem. And when they brought it to David, David understood the risk that they took and the scripture tells us that he could not drink it. He wasn't being disrespectful. David was actually paying them great respect 
Because you see, verse 17 explains their act of selflessness was like a drink offering to David. It was something, it was a sacrifice, a pouring out of themselves, a risk at their own, their own, the blood of their own lives, that it reminded David of the drink offerings that were poured out before the Lord. In Exodus 29 and 40, the Bible describes those drink offerings and the purpose of them. They were poured out upon the Lamb and upon the altar fire as the morning and evening sacrifices were made. The priest would come through and they would have this mixture of, of wine and water and they would pour it out upon the lamb that was being sacrificed, upon the, wa- the fire that was beneath the sacrifice. It was, it was an offering. The, this drink offering was only to the Lord. It was solely for the Lord. The lamb that was being sacrificed was for the, was for the sins of the people. It was for men. But the drink offering was poured out solely for the Lord. It was a mixture of water and wine, like our communion today. When Jesus' side was pierced, blood and water came forth. It was a picture of His willing sacrifice and the pouring out of Himself for you and I. In the same way that the Lamb was offered for the sins of the Hebrew people, Jesus, the Lamb of God, was offered for the sin of the whole world. And as he poured himself out upon Calvary, it was symbolic, symbolized by the offerings that were made every evening and every morning for the sin of the people. And so this drink offering was poured out. It wasn't for the sins of the people. It was to make the sacrifice acceptable unto the Lord. Because even the lamb which was chosen as a pure, spotless lamb was not acceptable. And so the drink offering was poured out upon the, the altar for the Lord to make the lamb offering acceptable in the nostrils of God. It created a scent as it rose from the fire that masked the scent of the roasting flesh. And as it rose up, God received the sacrifice of the lamb for the sin, and he received the drink offering into his nostrils for him. (laughs) And so David understood that, and he knew that, and in his heart then he realized that this is, I can't accept this pouring out. I, I can't accept this risk and hazard that they took. This is something, this is something like the drink offering. I, I'm going to pour it out as much as it means to me, as much as they hazarded. I'm going to pour it out as an offering upon the ground under the Lord. <laughs> I believe there is a giving of ourselves. There is a pouring out of ourselves as Christians. There is a sacrificing to our own fleshly desires that we can make and give our lives as a drink offering unto the Lord, acceptable unto God. There is an offering of ourselves in which we can can do as these men, their courage and commitment, that we can pour ourselves out as a drink offering. Because truly, David illustrates in this passage that the drink offering was an offering of a life. It was the giving of life. In verse 13, the scripture says that these three went down and came and, uh, to, unto David in the harvest time at the cave of Adullam. These, it's an understanding that these three men were offering their lives. They were risking their lives. They, they poured it out to God. They poured it out and risked it for the king. In the same way, you and I must pour out our lives unto God. As they did it in this passage, they did it so that they might honor God for hearing their prayer, for bringing them back safely. God had provided the desire of David's heart. He's in a cave surrounded by his fiercest enemies. He has one request. I would love to have a drink of water. And so God allowed these men to win a victory that day over a garrison of Philistines, three of them, and bring it back, their lives intact, and without shedding their own blood, and pour it out, Then upon the offering, David was saying to God, this is at the risk of lives, so I'm pouring it out because you answered my prayer. You answered my prayer. How many of you can lift a hand to heaven and say, thank you, Jesus, for answering my prayers? Has he answered your prayer? Has he been good to you? Can I tell you it began with your prayer of repentance? 
when you prayed from your heart, forgive me, O God, and he washed you in his blood and cleansed you, that ought to be enough right there to pour your life out as a drink offering before the Lord. We offer our lives also in gratitude for his abiding presence. If you were to go back to Genesis 35 and read verses 14, there's another example of a drink offering poured out. It's poured out by Jacob when God had renewed his promises to him and, and God had renewed his destiny in his life. God had changed his name from Jacob to Israel and given him a new identity. Again, it's a likeness of our salvation. How many of you are glad that you've taken on a new name, the name of Jesus? You are now called after Christ. You have been born into the kingdom of God. You, he has identified your purpose and your destiny. And, and so like Jacob, Jacob that day poured out a drink offering there and offered his life at a place that he called Bethel, which meant house of God. And so he poured his life out as a drink offering in the house of God. It's so important for us to catch what God is doing here. When drink offerings are offered, they're offered in answer to sincere heart cry and prayer. They're offered when God comes along and gives you purpose and destiny and changes your identity. Hallelujah. Oh, aren't you grateful today? Doesn't it make you want to pour your life out and give yourself unto God, even here in the house of God? How many of you can lift your hand in God's house, in your Bethel, and begin to say, God, I want to give myself to you, all of myself to you. Your life is a drink offering. The question is, are we willing to be poured out? The Apostle Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 6, he said, I am already, I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. Everybody say with me, ready to be offered. The revised version says, I am already being poured out as a drink offering. Are you already being poured out like the Apostle Paul? I think it's important for us today, and the purpose of this message is for us just to begin to tell God again, God, I am ready to be offered. I am willing to be poured out as a drink offering. Some of you remember when you were first saved, genuinely saved and born again. I remember when I gave my heart to God, all oh, the promises and the pledges I made when I was being baptized by the fire of God into his kingdom, when I was being birthed into the kingdom of God and I realized my sins were gone and that salvation had come to me and my life was totally changed. Oh, the pledges and promises I made. Oh, the things I said in the heat of that offering. And I began to say, God, I'll go anywhere. I'll do anything. I'm willing to be offered. Today, the purpose of this message is for us once again as believers to tell God, I am willing to be offered. To again, can you do that even now? Could you lift your hands and unto the Lord and say unto Him, Now, Lord, I am ready to give my life for you. I am ready to be offered for you. I want to do everything I can. It has been my experience that the offering of myself is the most critical part of my response to salvation. I've discovered that if a person doesn't offer themselves, if we're not willing to give ourselves to the Lord, then perhaps our salvation is not genuine. How can you be saved? How can you see Jesus face to face? How can you encounter a changed life? How can you, how can you possibly feel the experience of the washing away of your sins and not offer yourself unto God? So I have found that Offering myself is the most critical part of my response to salvation. As a matter of fact, you offer yourself and then the pouring out really begins. When you give your life to Jesus, there begins this incredible pouring out of your life. My experience has been the pouring out of my life is a daily offering. I've also witnessed this truth that the measure of the offering is greater at pivotal points in my journey. I'm here to tell you that at different points in your Christian journey, God is going to call upon you to make a drink offering. I can remember a few of them that was leaving my, my job and the stability of my job when, when Teresa and I had been married at that time for two years. I left the stability of my job for evangelism. I stepped out onto the road for evangelism. We were singing gospel music and I was preaching and we stepped out and obeyed God and that, that pouring out of myself 
Sometimes I look back and wonder where did the courage and the faith come from in our life to step out into that walk with just a couple of meetings scheduled, not knowing what would be beyond the first month and, and step out like that with our little boy Robbie and into the purposes of God. Just as a, just as a baby, just having just started walking, we, we take Robbie with us and out there we are on the road in evangelism. And then almost five years later, leaving evangelism to plant Calvary Church with no backing and no money, in a home meeting, first three years with no income, just saying yes to God, yes, I'm willing to pour my life out and obey God. I remember just five years ago this month, leaving this pastorate at nearing the age 60 to return to evangelism and missions. Because God said to there are moments along your journey where you, because in your response to salvation, you say, yes, I'm willing to be poured out. Yes, I'm willing to go for you, Lord. I think that also our attitude in doing it is a drink offering. We don't just pour it out begrudgingly. We don't say yes to the purposes of God in our life begrudgingly. We don't complain and pour it out. But no, I think our attitude itself becomes a drink offering. Because when I look at those in Scripture who had done it, such as the Apostle Paul that we mentioned, he gave himself rejoicing. The Scripture says in Philippians 2.17, the NIV says, Even if I am being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice of your service and faith, he said, he said I do so gladly and I rejoice. The attitude, I, I give myself rejoicing, even if I am being poured out as a drink offering for your service because of, of reaching you. I'm arrested and in jail because I preach the gospel to you. In a Roman prison, writing this, the first of the epistles that Paul would write, even if I am in these chains, I pour myself out rejoicing to see what God is doing in your service and your commitment now in that local church. Jesus did it in Luke 22 and 20. He is taking communion. And as he is taking communion, the first, what we call the last supper, but the first communion, as he's taking it with the disciples in Luke 22 and 20, he says, this cup, which is poured out for you. Everybody say poured out for you. This cup, the wine, representing His blood, which is poured out for you, is the new covenant in my blood. The blood of Jesus was poured out as a drink offering. He recognized that what He was doing was a drink. He was the Lamb, but He was also the drink offering. He was the priest, the Lamb, the sacrifice, and the drink offering, all wrapped up into one for you and I. <laughs> and He did it. The scripture says, with joy. In 1 John chapter 5 and verse 6, this is from the New Living Translation. I want you to catch the power of 1 John 5 and verse 6. Here the Bible says, and Jesus Christ was revealed as God's Son. Watch this. By his baptism in water and by shedding his blood on the cross. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And the Spirit, who is truth, confirms it with His testimony. Now, I'm about to shout right here. So let me just stop just a moment and get a hold of myself. Jesus was revealed as God's Son by His baptism in water and by shedding or spilling out or pouring out His blood on the cross. Not by the water baptism only, but also by water and blood. Jesus became that mixture through baptism and through the cross of the wine, the blood being poured out and the water mixture that was poured out as a drink offering upon the lamb and upon the fire that burned beneath it. Jesus is saying to you that through baptism, he poured himself out. And through shedding his blood, he poured himself out. That means a lot to me because you and I, one of the first steps we take in pouring ourselves out is water baptism. 
Jesus symbolized the pouring out of himself and the giving as a drink offering and water baptism. In like manner, when you and I rise from our knees in repentance and we go to water baptism, we identify with our Christ pouring out of himself and we go under the water in water baptism saying to God and to all the world publicly, I am willing to publicly pour myself out Hallelujah. For Jesus Christ, he saved me. See, in water baptism, this is what happens. In repentance, we cry out, save me by your blood. In water baptism, we are saying, use me as a drink offering. In Holy Spirit baptism, we are saying, fill me with the power of the Holy Ghost. And so as I repent, I say, save me. In water baptism, I say, use me. In Holy Spirit baptism, I say, feel me. Oh, thank God for all of you who have participated in water baptism, for all of you who have received by the blood of Jesus forgiveness of your sin as you repented of them. And you went on then and said, I want to identify, I want to spend my life pouring myself out. Oh, I'm here to tell you if I've recently repented of my sin, I'd want to run to the waters of baptism. I'd say, sign me up. I've been washed in the blood of Jesus, cleansed by the blood of the Lamb, saved by His drink offering, and now I'd like to give myself to Him. I want to go down in water baptism and tell my brother, my mother, my sister, my father, my friends, my ex-friends, I'm living for Jesus now, and I'm pouring myself out for the rest of my life. Can we give him a great praise offering? So we give ourselves, and we give ourselves regardless, no matter the cost. In 2 Corinthians 12 and 15, Paul said of his pouring out, he said, I will very gladly spend and be spent for you, even though the more abundantly I love you, the less I'm loved. It's not about receiving pats on the back. It's not about somebody saying you did a good job. It's just, I, I want to do it, and I'll give myself regardless. Paul is saying, I don't care if you love me or not. I'm willing to be poured out for you. In this political climate that we are enduring right now, isn't it great to be able to come to church and, and feel God saying, I died for the whole world? Aren't you glad he didn't just die for Democrats, didn't just die for Republicans? There used to be a party called the Whig Party. How many of you are glad he didn't just die for the Whigs? Can somebody say amen? He died for the whole world. And so he, we need to be saying, I don't care what, who it is or what it is. I, I'm going to witness my, I'm going to share my faith and share my testimony and share what Jesus did for me. Even when he was rejected, Jesus came unto his own. John 1, 11, and his own received him not. I want to close here. I'm thinking of my wife, Teresa, today. She's ministered this weekend. She flew out. I don't know how she did it. We just got home uh, on Wednesday after midnight. And Friday, she's in a plane headed to preach in a ladies' conference in Williamsburg. And so she ministered Friday and Saturday, and she's preaching in a church and. Newport News, Virginia, today on Sunday morning while I'm ministering here. I've always admired this woman. Son, I love your mama. Her determination to worship God and rejoice in trials. I come to her, a new bride, and say I'm quitting my job and we're going in evangelism full time. and Just do it, Richard. I believe in you. We get in a car. We travel for five years in evangelism with no home. She poured herself out as a willing sacrifice in obedience to the call of God. Changing diapers in the car. <laughs> Sometimes changing her clothes. <clears throat> From the spit up. I know it's hard to believe Robbie did that, but just getting redressed in the car. Amazing the things that she went through. 
planning the church, living in Sunday school rooms in our first building, giving up a lot of comforts and things like that, offering herself so willingly. And then when I come to her after 29 years of pastoring and say, I feel led, I feel God saying we're to go back into evangelism. And Robbie is his season, his time. We've got to let the church go on to the next generation. And she said, yes, I believe it. Let's do it. Every time I look over and see her in the car, driving up the highway, I dread the day that either of us has to release the other into the arms of God. I don't know what I'll do. I don't know what she'll do. Probably follow the other <laughs> right into the presence of God. We've willingly given ourselves today. I want to challenge you right where you're at in your seat. Perhaps you could stand with us right now. Conviction fills my heart as I reflect on my own life and calling. When people tell me that the thing they can't believe that we did what we did, took the risk we did, or said yes when we did, I can't help but say I truly feel as if I've made no real sacrifices. And I'm willing to do more. So to those here who have not received Jesus today, you can begin to pour yourself out upon the Lamb of God. You can say yes to God and give Him your heart and life and repentance right this moment. You can pour yourself out on the grace of God and upon His sacrifice for your sin. Can we bow our heads together? If you're here today and you have not given your heart to Jesus, with every head bowed, just slip your head, hand up and say, I want to give my life to Jesus today. I want to give my heart to the Lord. I feel His presence. I feel His drawing. And I too want to live a life with purpose and find my destiny. I want to give my life to Jesus today. If that's you, slip your hand up quickly. God bless you, sir. Someone else? Is there another? Is there another? God bless you. Praise the Lord. Is there someone else? All right, this morning we're going to pray for those who slip their hand up, and we're going to pray with them. Would you pray with me out loud, every believer here and those who slipped up their hand? Pray with me. Heavenly Father, I know you love me. I know you died for me. Now I give myself to you. I return my life to you. You gave me breath. You gave me life. And now you're giving me eternal life. So I give my life to you. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Save me. Amen. Can we give God a great praise offering for that? Come on. We ought to be praising him. Oh, how we love you, Lord Jesus. Around the front, the altar team will be here for anyone who needs any further prayer. I'd like to pray a quick prayer for the believers that are here. As a, as a child of God, as a Christian, you can give God your all, not just a part. Let's pray together, everyone in here. Father, help us to give ourselves completely the drink offering of our life as a public profession, even obedience like water baptism. Help us to take that step of faith with courage. Sometimes, O oh Lord, offering our life as a drink offering can be walking away from a sin or walking away from a relationship that keeps us living as broken bread and poured out wine for Christ. Today, Lord, we surrender all. We surrender all for your glory and honor. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming to Calvary Church. Can we give the Lord a great praise offering as we go today? Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming to Calvary.